thanks so much for, for joining us this afternoon or this evening. My name is Julia Westfall, and I'm the owner of Hera Hub DC. And I'm also the, I would say, the excited recipient of all of the beautiful artwork that's been hanging on, uh, on our walls here at Hera Hub since January of this year. So um, never did we dream when we first installed that show <laughs> that we'd, we'd still have a show up in um here in in november but here we are and i'm delighted i really love um, madison's work and the other artists that are here they um i've learned since we've been doing this for the last five years of five and a half years that the art in the space really sets the vibe and the feel and um the sentiment around the space and so it's been always been really important for me to have art that helps um that people enjoy, you know, and I've had some art shows where things haven't been my particular favorite, but then I've grown to love them because they're usually here for three to four months. And there are unique things about different pieces that you can always find an appreciation for. But I have to say, I'm really uh, excited because all of Madison's work um, is just really very creative and works so beautifully in the space. And it's been just such a pleasure to have had her, her work here. So um, what we wanted to do was, you know, just even give more people an opportunity to get to know Madison, um, why she picked this theme of, theme of vanquishing power um, and some of the inspiration and motivation behind her work. Uh, I know she talks usually when we have an in-person reception, you know, each of the artists gets an opportunity to share different things about their work. Um, and, but we felt like it would be really great time now to um, do that, do that again, because it's just, um, you, know, you know, it's nice to be able to reach people that actually can't come in person sometimes to when we have a, an in-person show. So uh, really what I want to do is just turn it over to Madison and, and have her talk, with, talk you through some of her current work um, and what she's doing and how she gathers her inspiration. And, um, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers, hopefully um, after that, because I'm sure you know people would have questions. So Madison, I'm so thrilled to have you kick off your um, your your slideshow and show some of your beautiful work you have hanging here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, Hair Hub, um, I'm all, I've always been a really huge proponent of women who support women and, and businesses that are really women forward. And Hair Hub is one of those places. So I'm super fortunate to be a part of them. And I'm super grateful for Danielle Glosser who couldn't be here tonight, but um, she was the one who connected me with Hera Hub um, and it's just a lovely space. So I'm really um, thankful to be here, even though it's been like nine months longer than we thought it would be. <laughs> we never would have thought that was the case. Oh, we'll just leave it up for a couple of more months, but it's been, yeah. it's been wonderful having your work here though. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, that's me in my studio space, which is in my house. It's the room I'm in now. And these days it also doubles as my home office. Um, but I work out of my home. And um, if you guys caught my quick conversation with my grandma uh, when she first got on, I've been doing art my entire life since I was young. Um, and I really uh, worked and was comfortable working when I was younger in more realist, um, realist paintings. And I worked a lot in acrylic and oil. Um, but then as most people do, I went to college. Um, I have a degree in art history. And then I went on to get a master's degree in library and information science, focusing on cultural heritage information management. Um, but uh, as as what I think is to what is a general trend with with women artists is after you know going to the schools and getting the degrees and finding that job, I immediately went back to to my art practice, um, and I think it's it was a way to sort of like figure out who I was and and the part of me that 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 did art in the beginning was that was that still there and was that something that I could could work with. Um, and so I've been active in the DC. I, I am in, in Washington, DC, and I've been active in the scene here um, 
for about six or seven years at this point. Um, and when I got back into the scene, I was really interested in more mixed media work, which was very different than what I was doing before. So um, I would use a lot of found materials, magazine cutouts, book pages, string. Um, but the, as the more I got to working on my practice, the more painting really crept back into it, even though it was still um, pretty abstract. I do occasionally do re uh, realist or figurative work. Um, but the material that really stuck um, that has, has become my MO are our book pages. And I started using them mainly as a compositional piece. I liked the idea of, uh, well, first of all, I liked the idea of um, the pages out of old books have a really unique quality with their color and their texture and the way you can rip them. They, they, um, they just don't make paper like they used to, I guess. Um, and so it's, it's really fun to play with um in that sense and it it also uh was really intriguing to me to have this idea of of using words as image and how you know layering these pieces of paper and how that really changes the composition of the piece um i also really like when, when it comes to using um mixed media work i really like the idea of using a lot of texture and having it um having it more than a painting on a canvas. I really like having somewhat of a three-dimensional or like a sculptural value to it. Um, and so the more I was using these materials, the more I found how much the, the actual words on the pages uh, in, in my artwork was changing the way I thought about my pieces. Um, and, and in that sense, we all, we all have different connections um, with words and, and can bring things in and out of different contexts. And so that was intriguing to me as well, a sort of like taking words or sentences or these passages from books out of their original context of the book and, and sort of lacing them together with paint to create this new experience. And I think that's very, um, it's very unique depending on the viewer. They can bring their, their own self into the work and develop a connection with the work. Um, and I think my background in art history and cultural preservation uh, plays into that a lot as well, uh, because I like this idea of, of one assigning value as someone who's worked in, in a fair amount of museums and libraries. Um, the idea of, of assigning value, whether it's historic or uh, based on memory um, and how people value artifacts. Um, based on their own experience or idea of it um, changes the work. And so I, I think about those things a lot when I'm doing my work. Um, I think you can go to the next slide. Yes, so um, in this, this particular series, I worked on the latter part of last year. Um, I, I knew I was going to be doing a show at Hera Hub and so I wanted to have somewhat of a cohesive body of work. Um, and so this is a, a, a photo of, of one of the one of the little areas in the space um, of this particular series. And um, I, I entitled this series Vanquishing Power because it's um, it's a series of mixed media paintings that have this interpretation of, of natural regrowth over man-made material. Um, I you know climate change is a big issue these days. And, and pollution and how, how we've treated this planet over a few years is, is something that's very disconcerting and, and troublesome. And um, it made me think about how, in spite of the damage that, that humans have done over this planet, how nature is eventually going to take over um, and sort of work us out of a job, if I guess you could say, whether, whether we try to clean the planet up or not. And so this idea of, of the natural reclaiming the man-made was really interesting to me. Um, and generally speaking, over across the series, uh, you have the book pages that are that are sort of a symbol of, of you know, human creation, communication, politics, power. And I used paint and different texturizing pastes and color um, and metal foil, metal leaf to um, add texture and sort of create this sort of like regrowth over top of it um, to add a new idea of, of, 
of what I consider to be beauty um, from it. Um, and I think there's also like a different way to look at it in that um, I think these works sort of symbolize the urgency of combating climate change, but I think it also highlights um, the positive and natural significance of, 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 you know, we have like Mother Earth as we assign as female, sort of like the importance of female leadership in our world. We have the yang, but we also need the yang. Um, um, but before I go any farther, these are like my interpretations and my intention in these works, but um, I don't, I don't think art should ever necessarily be didactic. I think people bringing their own interpretations and their own ideas is really important, even if it's completely not what I, what I intended for the work. And so I always encourage people to, to think for themselves and enjoy a painting for, for what they want it to be. Um, so you can go to the next slide. Um, this is this was something that I see, and I think us as, as DC commuters see every day that really got me thinking about this. And this is this is such a weird photo, but it's it's um, a vent in the metro of the DC metro um, that has come in contact with with water and moisture. And over the years, it's like really changed how it looks. Um, and on my commute every day, I would see this, and it was just really striking to me. And so this is an, this is an example of every day of how, of how that nature, um, natural components are really taking over things that we've put in place that we thought were indestructible, like a concrete metro wall. Um, so now I'm going to get and go over the actual works that are in the show. So yeah, you can go ahead. So. Um, this piece was actually the very first piece that I did under this theme. Um, and I definitely did not go into working on this piece with the intention of like creating a whole series around it. It was really just like, oh, let's see what I can do and how I can play with it. And so you can see the shape is like a very natural shape, um, but you still have this idea of like the paper um, being some sort of like object that has been overgrown or eroded and rusted and oxidized even to create this this new look or this new image um, and i think the title um at, when i say affect of loss sort of like how power um causes you know the presence of power causes change um and ultimately the the presence of power causes the erosion of, of power as in the erosion of law as well. Um, you can go to the next one. Um, rebirth, again, um, here, I think the title sort of is self-explanatory here with this rebirth of a new, new um, image or new thing. And still here, the, the image is still very natural and organic, and there's not really a definitive shape. I would say out of this is one of my favorite pieces um, that I've done. I just really liked the sort of like giant square of copper that has these like really um, different colors of green. This is my favorite out of the group. Um, we can go to the next one. And again here still um, organic shape, still playing around with things. Um, it's called New Deal. Oh, oh and I will say that um, the the book pages that I use, um, especially in the beginning, were very random. I, I have a I have a bookshelf here um, that has a lot of books that I just use as as um, materials that I keep on hand, um, and just rip them out and and uh, use and sort of like see how it changes my idea of the work um, as I make it. What what words pop out at me to sort of like either enforce or change my intention of the piece. Um, and here, um, I don't. I don't necessarily now pick specific works um, to support my intention, but I do sometimes. Will will generally choose books based on their subject matter, but I never want the book themselves, the title of the work, to overshadow to be to be used as a backdrop for the art. I should say. Um, I want. I want it to be looked at with a fresh, fresh eyes. Um, that being said, uh, using this 
the words that popped out of me were New Deal, and I think it could be interpreted. Um, with, there's a lot of talk these days about the Green New Deal um, with how we treat the environment, so it, it could be interpreted that way, um, but I don't believe the book in question um, has that context. Could be more of the old New Deal. Um, anyway, the next slide. So this is, rule of three is when I really started um, being a little more intentional in the shapes that I was using. Um, the, the idea of the rule of three is sort of a, it's a, it's a established writing structure um, where, you know, events that occur in threes are generally more satisfying. Um, and three is also a symbol for growth and creativity. Um, so I thought that really fit well with this theme, um, but I'm still sort of like using more organic shapes. And then the next slide is where I really started to use um, definable objects, less abstract, but still in this style. So here, you know, it's essentially a brick wall um, that I took a note from here and created these shapes, excuse me, in the same, um, in the same style. Um, I think we can go to the next one. And um, here we have hope, this is, this is the largest piece in the show um, at 46 by 36. And Hope, this piece actually comes from, um, a ref it refers to a tarot card actually, um, the seven pointed star, which is a very feminine card and it symbolizes rebirth, which I thought really fit well um, with, with this theme. And in working with book pages, it's really tough to, or it's been, it's been challenging for me to sort of work larger because you know you have the size of the book and using that size it's really easy to like manipulate the paper to fit a smaller piece and so one of my challenges and and um sort of uh, goals i guess is to really work larger and so this this was um a challenging piece for me to do just to 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 work large and um it's, it's very sculptural and very three-dimensional, but I think it turned out pretty successfully. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, and the other thing that I did um, in this series is really change around with the color. So you had the, the green, which was a very traditional um, call of the, the oxidation of metal. Um, and so I wanted to get a little more whimsical and maybe choose different colors as well. So here I, I'm playing with this tealish blue um, that I really love to use in my other work. And um, uh, weights and measures, I mean, you get the idea of like push and pull, um, yin and yang again. Um, and I think I got this idea more of like the weights in a grandfather clock um, in, in the concept of time here. Um, we can go to the next one. And here, it's, it, this is a departure, a little bit of a departure, and I think it still fits the same theme, but um, sort of the style changes a little bit. And this is a triptych called the Salt Line, and um, it, this piece really started out as, as, uh, as one, one piece that was, um, I was essentially playing with it. I was actually over at our friend's house who was doing an art night, um, and I just really liked the way that it turned out and so I made two more. So these pieces like come as a set or you can buy them individually, but they really work together, together. Um, they work well together. And um, uh, I think the idea of the salt line is, you know, that, that line in the sand um, that is created as, as the tide rolls out where you see where the tide came up and then it ebbs back and um, it creates this really beautiful, um, uh, marking in the sand, which which um, was inspiring to me. Um, next slide, please. All right. Um, Night shadows in the desert. This is a little bit of a different piece that is a little bit earlier. Um, when I this was oh man, this was probably two or three years ago. I did a work trip out to New Mexico, and I had never been out in the desert before. I, I'm born and bred East Coast pretty much. And um, 
as anyone could could probably relate to being out in the desert is like being on a different planet if you've never been there before um and i was out in this uh community center that was out in the desert and it was night and it's just this really magical feeling and really mystical place um when you're experiencing it for the first time and it was a full moon that night um, and so things just really, the, the moon just really like lit things up. And when I was at this community center, there was a, a really large uh, stone wall um, that was around the center. And it was just this really striking, memorable, magical moment. And if you see in the piece, there's a lot of, it's a really simple piece in terms of the composition, but there's a lot of texture involved. So um, at the bottom, and I think you can see it here, there's these like boulder-like shapes um that all that i created with paper and then painted over it so it's very subtle but it's 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 super textury there and um i actually was able to find the photo that inspired me for this piece so if you want to go to the next one next slide um this was the photo that i took on, on that night that that really captured um my feeling with this piece and so it really stuck with me and was was a very magical moment for me. Uh, next slide. This may be my last, yeah, this is the last piece I'm gonna talk about. Um, and this piece is, is um, based on the work of Clifford Still, uh, who was an abstract expressionist painter. And I think, um, you know, with, with my background in art history um, and a lot of artists, I think, you know, really fascinated by other artists practice and process and and how they do their work and what inspires them and and i certainly look to to other artists um in history on on how they how they accomplished their work and last year i was out on a, a work trip to denver and there is the clifford still um museum out in denver and it was it's he does these he's an abstract expressionist painter um around world war ii um does these like really huge um, abstract pieces, but he's very smart with his color choices. Um, they're pretty gritty and can be moody, um, but they're very organic. And um, uh, it, it, it spoke to me. And I think, you know, when you go to a museum that's dedicated to one artist, you can really dive into their style and and what they do and so this was sort of um me thinking about him and and his work and uh i use i titled the piece based on a quote from him um and i'll read it and he says i never wanted to be a i've never wanted color to be color i never wanted texture to be texture or images to become shapes i wanted them all to fuse together into a living spirit and I think that's a goal that a lot of artists have where you work so hard on composition and, and, and creating a work of art in all these little highly detailed and intricate ways. But at the end of the day, you just want people to step back and look at it as a whole and really have it live and breathe and take on a life of its own um, and inspire others. So that was really powerful to me and how I created this work. And I think that's all I got. This, oh, this is um, this is just an example of what Clifford Still's work looks like. I didn't I didn't model the piece before to be exactly like this work specifically, but this just gives you an example of his work. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Matt Madison, for sharing all of that. You know, I know all these pieces very well, and so it's nice to get your, <laughs> you know, your um, the background on it. You know, I think the two, my two favorites are salt line and then the uh, desert one. I, I just think they're yes. beautiful. So we, we only have a few more minutes, but I'm happy to stay or another minute or so. If people have to jump off at 530, that's fine. Please feel free to. But if people have questions and they want to stay and ask Madison a few questions, um, you know, I'm happy to stay on. And um, I've also posted in the chat the link to her next show. Um, with Latello Curator Curatorial, Women in the Arts. So um, yeah, so you can continue to see her work there, but does anybody have a question for, uh, for Madison? I, I have a question. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Do you um, find yourself saving books 
with the intention of using them in the future? All the time. I used to really love going to um, Capitol Hill Books, which is a used bookstore on Capitol Hill. Um, the one with the grouchy old guy in it? Yep, the one with the grouchy old guy. Um, it's, I mean, it's a really great shop to go to anyway, but it, it, that's a gold mine for finding like really interesting, um, maybe even like idiosyncratic books that are just fun to look at, but also fun to hold on to. So yeah, I have, I have a huge, I, you know, hoard, I hoard old books, um, even when I have no intention of reading them, just to use them <laughs> in work. <laughs> just to have them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, I often wondered about that, if you actually used or, or you photocopied, because my, ten my tendency would be not to touch, you know, you know, to tear the book up, but sure. uh, it's really interesting to, to re reuse it in that way to give another life of its own, you know? Well, and I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there are folks that, um, that sort of cringe at the thought of ripping up a book. Um, as a librarian, <laughs> as a trained librarian, <laughs> um, unless it's a, like, a first edition or, you know, what would someone qualify, what someone would qualify as like a rare expensive book. Um, there are plenty of other copies, plenty of yeah. other copies in the universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who else would have a question? Phyllis, go yeah, ahead. I do. So, hey, Phyllis. I'm Madison. Uh, I'm the owner of, I, unfortunately, I'm not where the piece is. I was going to, if I did, I would know the name of it, but, but it was just outside the room where the um, Night Shadows in the Desert is. Yes. Um, so anyway, I love the piece. But my question is with salt, um, mm -hmm. when I go into the Hera Hub office, I find myself just captivated by salt and I stand and look at it. And I've always wondered if you picked the words on the print pages that are in each of the three pieces for any reason, and what should we take from the words in those prints, or did you just pull a book off and put the paper up? Great question. Um, I generally don't, sometimes I'll pick a book specifically for the context, um, but I won't generally pick specific pages. And I think that's like an interesting like psychology semiotics activity where I sort of pick things at random and it's interesting to see sort of what comes out of it. And I think that's different from person to person. So um, I guess the short answer is there wasn't a lot of intention to that. Um, but it's, it's fun to see what comes through when you, when you do work like that. So thanks, because in your um, earlier point where you said some people interpret your work different than you, I would mm -hmm. say I find words in that and I wonder how it relates to the cascading hills in the ah. um, piece. So I've created my own story on the uh, words I found in your work, so thanks. <laughs> Actually, really, I hope you do. I really love that. I hope everyone creates their own story, yeah, so that's thanks. good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So does anybody else have a question? I do, yeah. Um, so I know that sometimes you pull words from the pages that you've picked to name the piece, but at what point in the process do you like decide how or what to name a piece? Um, it's really at the end of it. Um, I, I, I think because like words can be covered up and maybe as I'm working, I'll like notice things here and there, but I, I really just wait until the end where things are finished and I'll go back and sort of like reevaluate what's there and see like what comes through. So I save that for the end for sure. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Lauren is another uh, owner of a piece. Yeah, you <laughs> as well. she, Guy right. over my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. <laughs> That's great. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Thanks for sharing it. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Well, if that if no if there aren't any other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us.